After the drama of last week, Boris Johnson's government hoped today it could hit the reset button. But the Prime Minister had to send an understudy to his own press conference. The Chancellor was out and about, but Boris Johnson missed his planned outing. Instead, he was holed up in Downing Street in self-isolation. Hi folks, the good news is that NHS Test and Trace is working ever more efficiently. The bad news is that they pinged me and I've got to self-isolate. A Tory MP, the Prime Minister posed and chatted with on Thursday developed Covid. So Boris Johnson and six other Tory MPs at the meeting are all now self-isolating. Some were asking if it was strictly distanced and strictly necessary in lockdown. It wasn't my meeting, so the meeting was requested to be in person. I think if you're safe, then you, you're fine to, to have work meetings. We always have people wanting to get the tape measure out or to, to nitpick over the odd centimetres or whatever. But uh, of course, test and trace doesn't work that way. I think we, we could have all been wearing radiation suits and been uh, even further apart. So with the Prime Minister now locked inside number 10, the only outward sign of a post-Dominic Cummings new approach is the appearance of a cabinet minister on Good Morning Britain after a 200-day ban. Do you support the boycott? Did you agree with it? Well, I'm, I'm here to answer all of the questions that you might have on behalf of your viewers. I, 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 I just asked you one. Um, I was... Um, uh, yeah, and I, I was, uh, as I say, I... Uh, did you support the boycott? I'm just curious, did you support the boycott? We, we haven't been away. I've been on, uh, <laughs> you know, working incredibly hard. Did the departure of top advisers mean the Brexit negotiating stance might change? In Brussels, the team chief insisted his brief hadn't changed. We're working very hard to get a deal, but there's quite a lot to do. A lot to do with only six weeks left before Britain leaves the transition. But some hardline Brexiteers aren't panicking about a sellout yet. Do you worry the government might go soft on a Brexit deal? Well, no, I don't, uh, because importantly, uh, David Frost remains in position as chief negotiator. Uh, his deputy, uh, Oliver Lewis, is still there, uh, as is the rest of the negotiating team. But such was the turmoil surrounding Dominic Cummings' departure from government. These two negotiators were believed to be seeking assurances from Boris Johnson last week that Brexit policy hadn't changed. A moment when a Prime Minister wants to be visibly exerting authority, not locked indoors. Well, we're joined by two Conservative MPs. Caroline Noakes, who's the chair of the Women and Equalities Committee and joins us from Romsey. Paul Maynard is the MP for Blackpool North and a member of the Northern Research Group, who the Prime Minister has just addressed. He's also a former Transport Minister with responsibility at the time for Northern Powerhouse Rail. Paul Maynard first, just wondered whether you'd been reassured by hearing what the Prime Minister had to say or if you're worried that he's forgetting all those Northern voters that put him in power. Well, the meeting I just had, as I've heard, those meetings are best kept confidential. But what I can say is that no one can doubt the Prime Minister's own personal commitment. And do you feel that he ha is on the front foot on this? Because I know there have been some concerns over the last few weeks that the levelling up agenda has been slightly forgotten amid the pandemic. I mean, very much so. Clearly, Covid has taken up a lot of the bandwidth of government. But we were elected on three main platforms in the north of the last election. Getting Brexit done, which is into its final uh, stages. Keeping Corbyn out, not just of power, but now the Labour Party, it seems. But also to level up the north. And now that we can focus on that, I think we need to work out what we actually mean by levelling up the north. What it looks like. What difference it will make to my constituents. Then we can start to see it running through our policy like a golden thread. Caroline, are you clear about where the government's heading at the moment in terms of its policy priorities? Well, absolutely. And I think the pandemic has put the government in an unprecedented situation. They're working incredibly hard to make sure that a vaccine can be rolled out, that people are kept safe. But once we've moved on from that, it has to be about levelling up, as Paul says. It has to be about the environmental agenda and making sure that COP26 is a success next year. And it also has to be about making our country fairer for women, for BAME people, for young people. And I think they're some of the big challenges that we face going forward. Paul Maynard, is it possible to address all of those challenges that Caroline Noakes has just set out, specifically level up, but also this green agenda that's being talked about a lot in Downing Street now? 
I don't think it's a case of either or. You can look across the north at the strength of the wind power sector in Teesside, the Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre in Sheffield, um, the strength of nuclear on the west coast of Cumbria with the advanced modular reactors that are now coming our way. So a northern economic recovery can also be a green economic recovery. So we shouldn't see the two as being separate. In every area of public policy, there can be a northern thread about levelling up, in my view. Caroline notes the green agenda is the sort of buzzword in Downing Street now. It's been suggested that Carrie Simons has been very influential in pushing the Prime Minister towards this. Do you welcome her influence in all this? Well, I don't think it's just Carrie that has a strong influence over the Prime Minister when it comes to the environmental agenda. If you look back at his track record as London Mayor, he was determined to drive down emissions in our capital. He's kept Zach Goldsmith as a member of his inner circle in government who has such a profound commitment to the environment. So I'm pleased to see that the PM is getting the opportunity to go back to an agenda which has always been important to him and is crucially important for the future, not just of our country, but the planet. So a return to Boris Johnson, Mark One, the sort of socially liberal prime minister rather than the populist that swept into Downing Street. Well, I'm a proud One Nation Tory, as is the Prime Minister. He is socially liberal. That's where his heart and his mind has always been. And I think this is a great opportunity for him. As Paul says, we're going to have Brexit done in just a few weeks' time. And this is a chance for the PM to be on the front foot with a domestic agenda that can help the whole country, North and South. Paul Maynard, are you clear who the Prime Minister really is and who was voted in? Oh, extremely clear. The Conservative Party that I joined back in 1990 is the Conservative Party we have today that stresses good, competent, pragmatic governance in the national interest. That doesn't change. We now have a strong mandate across the north of England to deliver some real economic and social change. To me, that's a fantastic opportunity, one we should embrace with both hands. And I'm really glad to see the Prime Minister as enthusiastic as all of the northern MPs are. Are you concerned, though, that it was suggested at the weekend that, quote, posh southern women were now in the driving seat um, around Boris Johnson? Does that worry you at all? I think that's total nonsense. I think the Westminster bubble is getting much, much too obsessed with who's in, who's out, or inner circles or whatever. None of my constituents give a hoot about that. What they want to see is improvements in the communities that they live in, the institutions they rely on, in their homes and in their families. That's what they want us to focus on. That's what all the Northern MPs are focusing on, and what I believe the Prime Minister is focusing on too. Would it help to have more Northerners round the top team, though? I think we've got a Northern Chancellor already. We've got plenty of Northern MPs in senior positions already. And I think what I want to see as a Conservative is to have the very best people uh, sitting around the government table making the best decisions in the national interest. We are a national party. Caroline Notes, do you think with Dominic Cummings and Lee Kane gone, to name two, is it going to be a less macho government? I mean, we had some real sort of macho briefing at the weekend emanating from allies of the two of them, that the mad queen is destroying the court, taken as a reference to Carrie Simons. Her allies said that this was rank misogyny. Is it going to be less macho now, do you think? Well, I think Carrie's allies are absolutely right. I think we have seen some horrendous briefings against her. And from what I know of Carrie, and I don't pretend to know her well, she is bright, articulate. She has strong views on issues. And, oh, guess what? A few people are afraid of that because they don't like women with views. It is misogynistic. It is puerile. And the less we see of that, the better. I hope that we can move forward in an era of consensual politics where we can make grown-up decisions, looking at the evidence and, and taking some of the, the hard decisions on policy and political grounds, not personalities. Did Dominic Cummings foster that sort of culture of misogyny in Downing Street? Well, it, it gives me a great pleasure to say I don't know Dominic Cummings. I think I've encountered him twice in my life. Uh, but I don't think that he fostered an atmosphere in Downing Street that was conducive to, uh, to good government, governance. I don't think that we saw enough women included in the decision-making process. And if you exclude 50% of the population, then you're going to get bad decisions. Paul Maynard, do you agree with that? 
Well, I've only met Dominic Cummings once. It wasn't the most joyous of occasions. I'd have had him out on his ear back when he drove to Barnard Castle. But at the same time, I don't think that he is the main <laughs> issue there. Here, as Caroline says, we have to make a number of very difficult policy decisions in the coming months and years. We need the right people around the Cabinet table making decisions based upon the national interest, not who's shouting loudest behind the scenes. Why wasn't it the most joyous of occasions when you met Dominic Cummings, just out of interest? Oh, it's perfectly possible to disagree with people, isn't it? <laughs> Can you say any more on that? No. <laughs> Fair enough. Paul Maynard, Caroline Noakes, thank you both for joining me.